Welcome to Jesus for Asia Now. I'm Natalie Wood, and I have my husband John with me today. Hi, darling. Hello, love. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And you know, we've got a really wonderful project to share today. Oh, yeah. I love this, this is one, one of our favorites. Yep. You uh -huh. know, we talk a lot here at Jesus for Asia about what God is doing in Asia mm -hmm. and what needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah, and this is one of those things where God showed us that there was a need. Yeah. And then he enabled us to be a part of it. That's right. A part of the solution, I should That's say. That's right. You know, when we first started Jesus for Asia, we were nothing but Bible workers. We did local Bible worker sponsorship. About a year after we started, Israel, our JFA director in India, uh, had a heart for the children in the villages that he was seeing that were a lot high illiteracy rate, high malnourishment rate. And he was like, we got to do something for these kids. And I'm like, no, we can't. We can't diversify. We just got to focus. Mm -hmm. And um, then I went out and prayed. And the Lord made it very clear through His Holy Spirit, warmed my heart, and then did miracles right after that. And we started our first evening school. Okay, so we're talking about the evening schools. Yep. All right, we've got some statistics about India. Yeah, this is a big reason why um, in statistics, in numbers that, you know, when you go over there, you see it. It's not just statistics. Mm. But this is the big reason why we're doing this type of ministry in India. Okay, so what is the statistic of malnourished? India, unfortunately, is home to almost 200 million undernourished people. Okay, so that's not just children. No. That's the whole population. Right. Well, that's it's, a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's a huge amount of people. 200 million. That's two-thirds of the United States population. Mm. So another statistic is that over 7,000 people die every day in India Yeah. from malnutrition and starvation. That's correct. And in all the, the whole world, one-third of the entire world's hungry live in India. Wow. So India is home to one-third of the world's undernourished people. Mm. Wow. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's a endemic. It's a doesn't it's need to happen. It's overwhelming and some, you know, just hearing the numbers, it's overwhelming. Yeah. But one yeah. person at a time. Right. We can make a difference. And that's the challenge that we face, that I faced on a personal level. It's like, why even begin? Why even, why even start? There's no way that I, as just one person, could, could change those kind of numbers. 200 mm. million people, there's no way. And so I'm like, why even try? Why start? Why, and it's, what kind of impact are you going to have on those kind of numbers? It's mm -hmm. impossible. But then the Lord reminded me, you know, what about the one? Yeah. You know, if you change the life of one, you know, Christ was willing to come to this earth and live 33 years in pain and misery and die for one soul, mm -hmm. for me, then, okay, I can, I can make a difference in one. Mm -hmm. We've <laughs> got to show some video. Okay. And I want to start because I know we have a lot more to talk about. Yeah. But I want to start sharing this video because it's an introduction to these beautiful children. Mm. And I, I would like our viewers to see. This is at a couple of different locations, just kind of an overview, introductory, this is an evening school type of video. <music> So you can see that there's different locations, different styles. Some are actually in the town. That first one that you saw was on the edge of town, right on kind of in a, the edge of a big open field. So it's a beautiful location. That school was moved there when one of the churches where we were having the school, the roof got so bad that it was leaking and they were afraid it was going to fall in. So even the people weren't having church there. They would have church in the courtyard. And so we, instead of just shutting it down, we, we moved it 
not the people, because it's like 45 minute drive. Mm. So we just moved the finances, the support to another place, another church there at Baladi Nagar. But then when we reopened, and in the next show we'll talk about the reopening of that one, reopened the original, the people up here at Baladi Nagar, they're like, There's, please don't take away our school. Yeah. So some amazing people came forward and with much patience and perseverance provided the funds to reopen the second one. So instead of, instead of shifting it back, we now have one in each location. Right. That's really exciting. <laughs> and, you know, our viewers probably noticed that both of those are churches. Mm -hmm. And we do them in churches a lot because yeah. of the fact that it's an outreach tool mm -hmm. and it's a blessing to the community around. And it, yeah causes the church to be a gathering place. Right. The church body gets involved with it also. Right. And so they're providing a service to the community, and it, and it really takes down some barriers. Yeah. That would We've mean. seen that over and over again. Yeah. The next thing we want to talk about mm -hmm. is the actual study that goes on, because these yes. are schools. Yes. But they're not traditional schools where we give out assignments and the teachers do lecturing. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of school where they're tutored in the classwork that they receive at the government school. Right. This is so like they, extra help, right. encouragement, and, and, and somebody to go over their homework with them. A lot of these kids, what we found out is a lot of these kids, even though they go to the school, the, the free school that's provided, they're not learning. And right. The teachers and some of that's because there's too many kids in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Some of it's because the teachers aren't paid enough to care. Some of it's because they're out, outcast children. So the teacher's a different caste, and so they're, with the caste system, even though it's been outlawed, it still yes. affects a lot of things that happen in India. Right. So these kids get ignored, and they, they're right. not learning. Right. And so we provide this extra school in the evening where they can really learn, and they can get the individual attention that they need. Right. You know, 12 out of the 60 kids that came to our first evening school when we opened it could read and write. Twelve. Right. Yeah, that means like almost 50 of them couldn't. Could not read. Right. And Tamil is not an easy language. <laughs> he got that right. My goodness. It's over 288 characters or at least 288 characters. We've been told several different numbers, but that's the smallest one. In their alphabet. So. Providing the studies is a very important thing to do. Right. And we want to show a little video of mm -hmm. them studying. Yep. Does this one have a narration? No narration. It's just a collage that so you can kind of watch and see how they do this. Okay, here we go. The studies are really important because a lot of these kids are not able to change what their fate is. In other mm -hmm. words, what they are destined to do in their lives because of their caste, because of their, you know, who they were born to and what privileges that affords them. Mm -hmm. The religion and tradition teaches that if they're born to a certain type of family, then they cannot change mm -hmm. what they do for a living. In other words, their caste is tied to their career. Mm. If they're born in a certain caste, they have castes that, that sweep the floor. They have castes that take out the waste. They have different castes doing the different things. Some mm. of them catch snakes. You know, that's that caste. They, that's what they do. Mm. So the three things that they need to better their lives, number one is they need nutrition so they can survive and grow mm. number, and, and, and learn and retain. Number two is they need training, learning. Number three is they need, they need delivery from that idea of this is all you can be you mm -hmm. know they need they need value added into their lives and so that's what i believe this school does it hits all three of those right and which is 
It makes such a huge difference. And we've heard so many stories from yeah. these schools about kids whose lives, you know, were changed, mm -hmm. families whose lives were changed mm -hmm. because of the schools. Yeah. So next, we get to see what happens during the worship time. Yeah. They have singing time, which is one the song that we just heard was during the singing time. Mm -hmm. And they learn memory verses from the Bible and they hear stories from the Bible, character building stories, moral stories. Yes. Because there's in the Hindu religion, the gods have all sorts of interesting character traits and they're very selfish many times. And so the attributes of the gods that are there in Hinduism mm -hmm. are not positive, not things we want these children to replicate in their lives. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so this encourages them to choose a better way. Right. For instance, one story is you've seen the god with the elephant head. Mm. Well, the story there is that um, the wife of the creator god wanted a son. So she got all the dirt off of her body and formed a little statue. And then out of that statue came her son. Mm. Well, one day um, she wanted to go take a bath. So she told her son, stay in this one location. I'm going to go bathe. Nobody should see me. So she went and took a bath. And while she was bathing, her husband, the creator God, came along. And the son said, you can't go there. He said, what do you mean I can't go there? No, she's bathing. She, you can't go there. The father got very angry, took out his sword and cut off the son's head. Mm. So the mother, the wife, the mother wife comes back and says, oh, you killed my son. Make him alive again. And so he said, well, go into the forest and whatever head you find, grab that one and bring it back. And she went in the forest, found an elephant, brought the head back, and that's how we have that son. And so you can see the father got angry, mm -hmm. cut and off his vengeance. head. Vengeance. Mm, yeah. So it's like human traits, human, and you see this in Greek mythology as well. Same type of idea that mm -hmm. the gods have the same kind of tendencies and human reactions mm -hmm. that we do. And so, so we want these kids to see a better way. Right, and, and the religion is taught through stories. Right. Uh, and so bringing these stories in, they start to see, yeah, different ways. We don't have to obey our passions, mm -hmm. that there's a better way. Right. Yeah. And the fact that there is a God that is loving, mm -hmm. that is not vengeful, that is not angry, mm -hmm. that wants good things and provides good things for his children. Right, <laughs> right. And then... Mm. They learn all of this, they hear all of this, and then once a week, mm -hmm. they get to have what we call a talent night. Yeah, Friday night instead of doing regular studies because it's after sundown, right? Right. They uh, get up and... And they share their memory verses yeah. and they sing songs. Mm -hmm. And so that's the next video we have. Yeah. We have a bunch of little clips of the children during talent night. Yep. Here we go. The kids over there like action songs too. Yes, just like they do here. <laughs> right. And they're so beautiful. And yeah. it's so neat to see them, the little ones and the bigger ones as they grow, yeah. doing, sharing that way. And those, and those seeds that are planted in the, in the scripture, you never know when they're going to sprout. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, we've been told that it makes a big difference to the families because mm -hmm. the parents are like, what? My child gets to get up and, and say something up in front? Mm -hmm. You know, that's unthinkable mm. for that lower caste or the outcast. And so right. it's been a blessing 
to um, to give them an opportunity to have a part in something. Yes, absolutely. I love it. <laughs> I used to have sports cars. Now we have evening schools and they're better. That's why this is one of our favorite <laughs> programs because yeah. of the children. They're so beautiful you and they're so energetic. The programs, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Every program is your favorite program. <laughs> I know, but the kids <laughs> smiles and yes. I don't know. There's just it's just so special. Yeah. And uh, it I have to hold back tears just seeing their beautiful faces and their yeah. energy and their joy. And yeah. when we're there, it's just so so amazing. Yeah. So That's someday awesome. I hope some of our viewers can go with us. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. So our next clip, mm. we're going to share about the eating part that okay. we've talked about a little bit, the nutrition. Yes. And nutrition is very important. Yeah. Because for many of these kids, it's their second meal of the day. Yeah, and a lot of them don't get vegetables with their meal. A lot mm. of times it's rice. With, In fact, um, in the next episode, we're going to go to one of our children's homes. And Are you going to... Are you going to do a spoiler right now? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I did. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> and all she had was rice and onions, okay. little onions. And so our evening schools, we have vegetables and different kinds of vegetables. And so they get the nutrition that they wouldn't normally get. More variety. Yeah. And you can tell the difference with the kids that, that are able to get this meal and, and then don't. Mm. You can okay. see it in their skin and their uh, hair. hair. Uh, it, it's just, it makes a difference. Okay. so precious. Why does it make me so happy to see kids eating? <laughs> Maybe because it makes them smile. Yeah, it makes them happy. It makes their parents happy. Yeah, that's And precious. I think it makes God happy too. Absolutely. That's why he's having us do this. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to point out that sometimes we, uh, the really poor elderly ladies or, you know, really destitute people, we allow them to eat there too. Yeah. So it's not just the kids, but whoever really, really needs it. Right. So you notice they had to wash their hands at the yes. beginning. 
Yes. And then they eat with their hands. Yes. Which is normal in all of India. <laughs> and my kids do that too when we go there. And we do too. Yep. Admit it. You eat with your hands <laughs> okay. when you're there. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and then afterward, they have to wash their dish. Right. And be a part of cleanup. But they're also required to eat their vegetables. Yes. When they first started, the kids weren't used to eating vegetables. And so they would set the vegetables aside and try not to eat them, just yeah. eat the sauces. And, <laughs> and they said, no, no, you have to eat the vegetables because it's part of why we're giving you the food. That's right. It's where the nutrition so, is. Right. Okay, so what's our next video? About? Well, this is really cool because, you know, even though we have several schools, there's always room for more. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like to open a school? Pidabe, <laughs> Okay, to the glory of God. There we go. There we go. I'm not pleased to come Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're here at Kate Same Paliam. It's the village in South India, and there's a church here, and we have just opened the church. It's grand opening tonight. Big celebration. Wonderful uh, presentations and talks. We had the president of the North Tamil Conference come all the way over here. It's about a four hour drive to get here just for this opening tonight. And the kids are eating. They're just getting done with eating and cleaning up. I just wanted to introduce you to the teacher. This is Niti, and she is studying. Be it. Yeah, Bachelor so of Education. Bachelor of Education in a local university. Uh, no, university. Yes, and she is... No university. College. No. College. College. Okay. And she has been a Seventh-day Adventist church member in this church since the day she was born. So, great tradition. I've seen her working with the kids, loves the kids. The kids respond to her very orderly. And we're really excited about this school being in good hands. So, thank you so much for making this school possible. There's a lot of widows in this village, a lot of very needy people. There's one lady that her husband is completely paralyzed and they have two kids and she gets like a thousand rupees a month, which is like $15 a month to live on. So some really hurting people here. So pray for Kate Pali, no, Kate Same Paliam. Uh, pray for the church here, Kate Same Paliam. And thank you for helping teach these kids. <laughs> God bless. They've eaten, they've studied, they've enjoyed the, the opening ceremony, and now they're getting ready to go home. They're kind of sleepy, but they all wanted to say thank you to those that make this school possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it's such a blessing to have a, a good teacher that's mm. learning education, you yeah. know. So she wants to be a teacher, yeah. and she is is actually using her skills already. Yeah. And that's such a blessing. Yeah. And little sad note in her life about 
or a year ago, her father passed away. Mm. And so she and her mother are alone in the world. And so pray for Niti mm. and her mother that they can get through this. And even in spite of it, she's smiling and she's encouraging the kids and she's, she's serious about her work. So that's really, really, really appreciate her. Yeah. The next thing we want to talk about is the cost mm. of actually opening and running one of these schools. Mm -hmm. So how much does it cost per child? to go to one of these schools? It costs about $7 per child per month, anywhere between seven to 10, depending on whether we can use a church or we have to rent a building and who we rent it through and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But seven to $10 per month per child will provide this opportunity for a child in India. Right, so that's about a quarter a day. That's a big impact. I mean, it's a lot of bang for the buck. Right, <laughs> to use that's true. To use Western colloquialism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and to open the schools. Mm. How much does it cost to open a new school? Generally, it costs between two hundred and fifty and six hundred dollars to open a school because, and a lot of that depends on whether we can use a church or if we have to rent and how much that rent is. A lot of it depends on you know how many kids are going to come. Do they need uh, to buy plates? The school that we showed tonight, that Katisami Palium, we're able to cook the food in one of the neighbors' houses, one of the church members' houses, mm -hmm. right next door. So we didn't have to buy the stove and things like that. Mm. That was already provided. So, But sometimes we have to buy all that, plus sometimes we have to build a kitchen. Right, or a toilet facility or, or something. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why it varies so widely. Because a, lot, a, of the, lo a yeah. lot of people would say, well, that's like $350 difference. Mm -hmm. But it's because in some situations we have to do extra. Yeah, well, a lot of so. times that costs even more than that, building a kitchen and a, and a, and a latrine, you're, you're talking probably about a thousand dollars for both of those things. But these churches just come just a square building, you yeah. know, no uh, fellowship hall, <laughs> no toilet, no uh, classroom, you know, Sabbath school classroom, nothing. It's just a square building and that's it. And so mm -hmm. where are they going to cook the food? Right. So a lot of these places we have to add in a kitchen, latrine. Uh, one of our schools that you saw, she was in there, the cook was in there praying over the food. Mm, that, that just was has, an earlier video, yeah. Yeah, that just has a little wall in the back of the church where they're supposed to, and that's a latrine, mm. but there's no toilet facilities, there's no flushing, it's just the ground there. So would love to build something there that's a little bit more civilized. Hygienic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I would like to thank our viewers for joining us tonight. And if you would like to be a part of helping these and other beautiful children, please send your tax-deductible love gift to Jesus for Asia, P.O. Box 1221, Collegedale, Tennessee, 37315. Call us at 423-413-7321 or check out our website at jesusforasia.org. May God richly bless you until we see you again on Jesus for Asia Now.